you welcome to learn right video series learn right is a company established to make learning very very easy for you i guess some of you know this face with all the wrinkles of course the face is getting old an old horse but i can still run as some of you know my name is william ajapon kwetu and i'm going to be one of those who's going to take you through the videos in chemistry at least you may meet two or three faces in this project that we are doing learn right we have to provide this videos to you to make learning very very easy for you and all the books that you may buy on the market from any of us the others we want you to understand the concepts and understand the subjects very very well so here I am, William Ajapon Kwetu, my books on the market, cough series. Many of you keep calling me, even sometimes when I'm driving, I have to park on the side of the road and answer questions. So the essence of this video is to, of course, let you have access to the lectures that you so much desire. Without wasting my time, we are going to start with the first topic. Of course, in my book, you have the introduction to chemistry. I'm not going to start with that. We are starting with the main uh, subject matter. The first topic, if you can find in the book, is what we call the structure of the atom. <laughs> uh, someone just cut it short and say the atomic structure is the same thing. Now, I want you to close your eyes. Just close your eyes. What do you see? Is there anything that you can describe? I don't think so. I guess you see a very dark background. And you don't see anything. But of course, even though you don't see anything, you can feel something. I'll talk about that in a jiffy. Now, with your eyes opened, my eyes are also opened. You are viewing me. There are a lot of things around me here. I'm going to point to a few of them. And then we'll see whether they have the same form, shape, size, or whatever. The first thing that I can see here, I can see my eyeglasses. I can see a weighing machine, which is a solid substance. I can see a beaker. I can see the pen I'm holding. I can see this paper. I can see this aluminum sheet. I can see a copper metal. I can see some stones here with this paper. Again here, I can see this bottle with oil in it. The oil can flow. Scientists will call it a liquid. I have this bottle too containing an alcohol in it. That is also liquid. But even when I open this tap, I can have water flowing. That is another substance. So we have two groups of substance that we can see now with our naked eyes. The solid, compact mass type of substances or the compact mass of substances which we call solid in, in, in science or in chemistry. Then we have the one that can flow, the water, the oil, and the alcohol that we saw. They can all flow when it's poured. And there's a third group of substances that we cannot see but of course can feel their effects on us or on the environment this third substance is called gas or gases as i stand here as you sit there watching me of course you are breathing in some gas there are several elements within the air but when you breathe in some particular elements go into your body okay even though there are several elements of gases within the air, some particular ones go within your body. So within the air, we have various gases in there. And so every substance, anything that you see on this earth with your naked eye, either you can touch or feel, can either be a solid, liquid, or gas. 
These are the three major classifications of substances that we see on this earth. Now, let me illustrate something with the substances that we can see so far. I have this big stone labeled B, okay? And I have this one labeled A. Now, I can take this stone here and get the space that it will occupy if I put it down like this. Yes, the stone occupies this space because of the size here. That is stone B. Stone A is bigger. It occupies it occupies that space. Okay. Now, let me take this beaker. There is an empty space here. But if I pour in water, the water goes to occupy some space within the beaker. I can also find the mass of the water that I poured in there. In the case of the stones, this one, it has been weighed already. I know this one, we weighed it very heavy. It's about 0 0.5 kilograms. And of course, if this is exactly half of this, then I don't want to put it on the scale. It will be too much for it. But I think this one has been weighed already. That is also about one kilogram. So a solid substance occupying some space and having a definite mass. Again, I have this a liquid substance that has occupied some space within the beaker and I can measure its mass. How do I get the mass of the water? Let me put this to, I mean, the container here. I'm getting about 5.136, 513.6 grams. Yes, 513.6 grams. If I want to get the mass of the water, very simple. I pour the water away. Then I take the mass of the beaker alone. The beaker is about 2.3. No, 2.30. So if this is the mass of the beaker, then when I subtract the mass of the beaker from the total mass of the beaker and the water, what I get automatically gives me the mass of the water. So here I get six. This one will give me seven, uh, three. Then this is eleven minus will give me eleven minus three will give me with eight. And then here I have one here. So I have two four here. That gives me two. So I get the mass of the water that I poured into the beaker to be. 283.6 grams. So, empty space, I poured in water, water occupied the space up to some level, I found the mass of the water. Now, I'm going to use this to illustrate something. This is a balloon. The balloon has some space in there. And now, because there's nothing in there, scientists will say there's vacuum in the balloon. But I can get some gas into it by blowing air into it. Yes. So now air has occupied some space within the balloon. Okay. If I want the mass of the air, I weigh the two. Yes, it's about roughly 14 grams. 14 grams. Now let me let the air out. So the air is gone out. Let me weigh only the balloon. I'm getting 9.6 grams. 9.6 grams. It means that if I take the 9.6 grams from the 14 grams, what I get is the mass of the gas or air that are pumped in. Now we have talked about all these substances. Any substance 
on earth that you can see, touch, or feel would take the form of any of these three states. Solid, liquid, or what? Or gas. And such a substance would definitely have some mass and to occupy a certain region within the space that we have. Or we say it will occupy some space. All such substances, chemists call it matter. All such substances are called matter in chemistry. So under the structure of the atom or atomic structure, the first topic or subject matter that we are looking at is what we call matter. Now, having explained all these things, if I ask you to define matter, what will you tell me? How will you define matter? Remember, I have described them with one common, with two common things. They have mass, and all of them will occupy some space. Okay? They have mass, and they will do what? They will occupy some space. So, we say that matter in chemistry is defined as anything that has mass and occupy some space. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies a given space. So that is matter. So all the things that we see around here, around us here, because we can take their masses, and because when we put them down, they occupy some space, that at that point, when they are occupying that space, you don't see that space. We say they are described as what? Matter, or they are called matter. Now, think about it. Take your mind out of this uh, lecture room. When you were young, you used to play some game. You tie a cloth around your waist and then you hold it and then be running. When you're running, the air around you will fold the cloth and the cloth will blow up. At that point, you realize that it becomes very, very heavy. Why? Because the air has gone to occupy the space within the cloth. And because that air now has mass, that is why it becomes heavy when you are trying to run with it. So it means that at that time, Matter, in this case air, has gone to occupy that space within the cloth. Again, in your kitchen, you tell you, oh, mommy, the gas is finished. You are told to go and fill the gas. At that point, what do you do? You just go and you lift the gas cylinder. The cylinder has become empty. There is no gas in it. You lift it, it is not so heavy. You send it to the gas filling station, and you say you are buying this quantity of gas. So they put it on a weigh machine and start to pour in the gas. Then you can read the weight. So when you read the weight and it's up to the amount that you want to buy, they stop it. At that point, when you are lifting it, remember, you have to use some strength to lift it. Because gas has gone to occupy the space within the cylinder. And so at this point here, the gas there can be defined or can be called matter. Even though you cannot see the gas with your naked eye, the air that comes into the cloth, you cannot see it. You can feel its presence or its effect on the environment or on your body or on yourself. And you see that it has some mass because it becomes heavy and then it occupies space. So we define matter as anything that has mass and occupies a given space. So all these substances here are matter and they will always all occupy giving space because they have some mass.